book, it's, it's always funny because I, I'll be working on, with graduate students and I'll be describing how difficult their journey is or it's become or it continues to be and I talk to them about this, this sort of little self-help book that I wrote and they just, and they, I don't have time to read a book, there's no way. I'm just, so I was like, just relax, it's, it's, look. <laughs> it's just little pictures, you know, with little captions uh, about this journey. And I, I don't know if you want to start the, go ahead and start the so it's going to actually scroll through the book, and, and again, if you're a slow reader, it'll, it'll go through it again so you won't miss anything, and you know, it's very text heavy as you can see, and uh, you know, they always tell us that we need to publish, so uh, hey, I published, you know, so it's really, really good. But let me tell you a little bit about the story, and, and, and then as we go through it, you can sort of see it, and like I said, it's going to go through again. So I'm originally from El Paso. Uh, my father's from Mexico, my mother's German, I was first generation. Um, and the way I'm defining that is I was the first person in my immediate family to go to college. Um, I remember not knowing anything about college or what college was. My three choices um, uh, that, that, that were sort of, you know, my top picks were UCLA, Texas, and Notre Dame, and it was all based on their football teams, you know, because I remember seeing them on Saturdays. And I was like, oh, those look like really cool places to go. I think the high school that I went to, less than 5% of the students that graduated actually went on to attend college, and most of them went on to El Paso Community College or UT El Paso, which was just a larger community college at that time. Um, it's changed a lot since then. Um, I went to the University of Texas because they gave me the most money, and I really had a hard time transitioning um, and adjusting to things. I was very successful socially, um, but I wasn't very successful academically. So after two years, I did something that I had sworn I would never do because my dad was <coughs> career army. I actually went into the Navy. So I went into the military because I felt like I needed that kick in the butt, and I went into the Navy because I wanted to piss off my dad, you know, because he was the army person. And it was the two years that I was in the, the military that sort of set me straight and just gave me some of those, uh, you know, just the, what I needed essentially to be successful um, in higher academia and higher, higher education. So I went back to Texas, I graduated, um, didn't really know what I wanted to, to, to do at that time. And, um, I had it before I went into the Navy, I'd been what I call pre-everything. I was pre-med, that didn't work. I was pre-business, that didn't work. I was pre-law, that didn't work. So then when I came back from the Navy, um, I just sat down with an advisor and I said, what, what do I have the most units for? And I just want to finish. And he's like, oh, looks like you got a lot of liberal arts credit, so why don't you get a degree in poli-sci? So I was like, cool, let's just do it, you know? And I knocked it out. Um, then I worked for a while, um, and I wound up going to Los Angeles because one of my best friends was accepted into law school. And while I was there, I was working for a nonprofit organization. And one of the perks of the nonprofit organization was you got one class a year or a class a semester at the University of Southern California, which is very expensive for those of you who are familiar with that institution. It's about fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year, so y'all are getting a great deal here at UNM. Um, and so I started to take one class a semester, and I, um, I had a mentor there who was the dean of students, and I was like, this is it. You know, I was that first generation student of color. I really struggled as an undergrad. I felt like a lot of people that worked at UT missed these amazing opportunities to sort of help me and steer me straight, and, and as a result of that, the US Navy took that role. And so this is what I wanna do. I wanna go into higher education. So I quit my job at the nonprofit and I got a job in housing at USC, which was great because it gave me free housing, free food, plus it paid for my tuition. And I was able to get a degree in higher education. And then I worked for a little longer, um, got married, had two kids, and I realized I had gotten so far up the sort of ladder within higher ed, I wasn't gonna go up anymore without an advanced degree, a doctorate. So I quit my job at UC Santa Cruz where I was working at the time and I went back to USC and I started my doctoral program. And what I immediately realized is this was not only going to be 
a personal sacrifice, but it was also going to be a sacrifice for my family. Because what was different between the undergrad, the masters, and the doctorate was that the undergrad, the bachelors, and the masters was just me. It was just my journey for the most part, right? But the doctorate was different because I had two little kids, I had a wife, you know, I really had to sort of disappear from society as you all are, are very familiar with, right? And a lot of people didn't really understand what that journey was like, what it was all about, why I was doing it, what the heck is a dissertation, what is a dissertation committee, you know? And it was just frustrating for me. So I started to, you know, go on Amazon. I was like, there's got to be like a dissertation for dummies book or something, you know, that you could get that I could then share with them so they could sort of understand my journey because they were so much a part of that. But there was nothing. There was nothing at all. So it just, you know, that, that was sort of pressing in the back of my mind. How can you help other people that are going on this journey with you understand what the journey is all about? Because they can't really support you in your journey if they don't understand it. Well, the book didn't just come from that. It actually came much later. But there was one night I was working on chapter three and I was really, really frustrated. And at this point, my kids just thought that I was just connected to the, the computer all the time. You know, it was just, that's what daddy does. You know, daddy doesn't play with us. Daddy doesn't go to the beach. Daddy, daddy's just on the computer all the time. So I yelled at the computer and I said something like, I've got to get this damn monkey off my back. And uh, the next day, next to the computer, I found my six-year-old son's sock monkey. And he had taken some uh, masking tape and he had written the word dissertation, I believe he, di he misspelled it, by the way, you know, because it is kind of a long word. And he had put it on the chest of the monkey, and that was sort of his gift to me. It was like, okay, you want to get the monkey off your back? I'm going to give you that sock monkey that's very special to me, very dear to me. He was at that age where if you go into his bed, you wonder, how does he sleep in that bed? Because there's like 50 stuffed animals into, in it, and one of them was this sock monkey. His great-grandmother um, would make sock monkeys for all the grandkids and the great-grandkids. So there's a picture at the end that you saw where they, each one of my kids has their sock monkey from her. So what happened was the sock monkey then sort of became the muse. It became sort of the narrator of my journey. So whenever I would post something positive, like on Facebook or Twitter, I would say, just got through chapter three, and the dissertation monkey is screaming in agony, right? Because the dissertation monkey didn't want me to finish, right? He doesn't want to get off your back. And then when something like really traumatic happened, like there was this one day where the, the edits going back between Los Angeles and Humboldt, where I was at at the time, they were just so near, fast and furious. I kept looking out the window, looking at the ocean, and I just felt like I was riding that wave where I'd get down, I'd feel really comfortable, and all of a sudden that next wave or that edit would hit me in the face. And at the end of the day, I felt like she was editing her edits. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like just institutionalized madness. What's going on? And so I would post something like that, and I would say, oh, the monkey's laughing at me. And so the monkey just became sort of the storyteller, right? And then when I graduated, which at USC is a very just formal ceremony like it is probably anywhere else, I decided, you know what, what the heck, I'm going to take the damn monkey with me on the stage. So I went up there and I got cloaked and I had the monkey with me. And then my friends were like, gosh, you got to write this book because, you know, there's a lot of other people that are going through, you know, a similar journey and maybe this simple little coffee table style book might help them out. So I got an illustrator at Humboldt State University. So all the pictures you see are actually outside of where we used to live, which was really beautiful, which made it even harder because there I am inside my office writing my dissertation instead of fishing or playing on the beach with my kids. And uh, he illustrated for, for me, and I didn't spend much time, obviously, with the text. It probably took me two or three hours. Um, and then we put it all together, and we published, and it's now at the UNM Bookstore. Uh, we're doing a book signing. Uh, it's on the 30th at 2 p.m., which I believe is next Wednesday or Thursday. And I'm in the process of actually getting a rep, because this is obviously something that you know bookstores, university bookstores, are really interested in because there's a lot of students that are going through graduate programs. I will be honest with you, it's also kind of like my jab at academia too. You know, I didn't do a doctorate because 
of any, my motivation to get a doctorate was simply so I could become a dean of students or a VP of student affairs at some point. I was lucky, I, di I did, uh, my dissertation was on equ equity gaps in higher education, which was something very personal to me, but it could have easily been the mating habits of a gecko or a salamander and I could have cared less, but it is what it is, right? Um, so it's kind of like I'm, I'm taking a poke at it too because you know, while I was going through my dissertation, pro, my, my doctoral program, um, I try to make it as simple, I try to make it as easy for myself as I could because the more, the more I could simplify it, the more I could manage it, the more I could like maybe spend time with the people that really mattered to me most, like my family, my wife and my kids. So it's kind of like a jab at that too, you know, like the, the, the whole dissertation committee where they're fighting. Actually, one of those images is my dissertation chair and you know, so I put her picture in it and she wasn't very happy with that, but whatever. Um, and I also make a, you know, a great point of saying, hey, this is, this is, this is my publishing. You know, I don't plan on publishing anything else. This was, this was essentially it. But um, you know, they say the best dissertation is a done dissertation and I, I completely believe that. I think too often we just get so hung up on the different pieces of it. You hear people who are talking about, gosh, it's such a hard process, but you know when I'm done, I'm gonna make one book out of chapter one and two books out of chapter two and three, you know, and I'm just like, just get it done, just get through it, get finished. Um, a lot of dissertations, as you know, I, I hate to tell you the truth, they're gathering dusk in some, some basement of some library at some university, they're not all gonna, you know, make the, the chronicle of higher ed or anything. It's, it's a process, and it's a very historical process. It's been around for hundreds of years. Um, back in the day, it used to just be for white, privileged men. It was a rite of passage. You know, there's still a lot of traditional elements to it. I mean, when you're, when you, when you're feeling sort of hazed, you know, talk to your chair, and you know, he or she is probably gonna tell you, well, that's how I was treated. And then you're gonna find out that their, that their chair, that's how they were treated, and it just sort of has been carrying on through time. You know, it's, 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 it's a process that's gonna teach you a lot of things besides just the, 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 the contribution to the knowledge field. It's gonna teach you discipline, it's gonna teach you how to time manage, it's gonna teach you how to, to research and collect data. There's a lot of other peripheral pieces to it. Um, yeah, and I would just you know, encourage you just to manage it to the best of your ability. For example, one thing that I did is I scheduled my defense um, the hour before lunch on a Friday because I knew my, my committee on a Friday from 11 to 12 was probably gonna start thinking about lunch at some point more than they were gonna start thinking about me and I was just trying to get through it again. I also knew that if I really thought about my responses and took my time and really crafted my response as well. Maybe I wouldn't have to answer so many questions. And as a result of that, I got away with answering three. You know, so I'm not trying to like, you know, disrespect the process or anything, but it is, it is to a certain degree a rite of passage and you've got to accept that. And it's something very historical. And so I always encourage people who are going through it, don't make it any harder than it already is. Don't make it any more difficult than it already is. And remember, it's what it gives you. It's what it provides you. It, it's the opportunity that it presents. You know, it's just a process. It's a process and you're gonna get through it. Any questions? Um, comments? Thoughts? Feedback? This is what happens when you schedule me on a Thursday right before dinner time. Yeah. The best thing I love, the, what I love about it uh, the, the most, and this is really cool, is every month, you know, since I published three months ago, I get a little email from Amazon and it's just a check going into my bank account and I was like, how cool is that? You know, it's just like, it's just happening. And it's not much, mind you, it's maybe like 50 bucks, but hey, 50 bucks is Dion's pizza with my kids. So yeah, it's a good thing. I'm sorry, someone over here? You've been to a couple of my sessions. Yeah. A cartoon, right? That would be cool. The Adventures of the Dissertation Monkey, right? Yeah, because that's the, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. No, because that's another thing too, what it's doing is that when my kids read the book, to them they see, you know, I think I told you this at one of, you know, I've been doing a number of sessions with the, it's the Graduate Resource Center, right? 
my son, who, you know, is now 12, the one who gave me the monkey, when you ask him what he wants to do or what he wants to study, he tells you, I want to go to Stanford and I want to get a PhD in microbiology. You know, so I think for young people, it also demystifies it a little too. And it makes it something that's more attainable for them because it, they understand it better. So yeah, that, that, that might be an idea. We're definitely going to put it out in some other languages. And at some point, the book would come with your own custom-made UNM sock monkey or whatever institution you were at. So that's my side job, right? I mean, not, as, not that I do a lot as dean of students or anything, you know, right? So. Cool. No, I was gonna, that, that's absolutely great. And, and I think it's inspiring uh, for those of us that have done dissertations and finished degrees and, and things that we all have stories. Um, and this, I think we all see us in this same story as well. You know, because right. you have to balance family, you have to balance, you know, time and money, right. like all that stuff. But like right. Student loans, those kinds of things. The first session I did with the Graduate Resource Center, uh, a woman came up to me afterwards and she was in tears because she had been on her journey for 11 years. So she had started off as married, then she had gotten divorced, and now she was a single mom. And, and again, it was exactly that. The, the book sort of just made her aware of the fact that she's not the only one that struggles and that it was something that she could really connect with. So. I'm glad she wasn't crying about my book, but you know, it was, uh, it, was, it was nice to help her out because, yeah, I mean, I think that was the whole purpose, just to make it easier for someone else. Yeah, and I don't yeah. think you're, you're diminishing the process at all. I, I, my piece of advice I got early on was, you know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist, well, you could be a rocket scientist, I guess, but just keep at it. Keep yeah, at it, keep at it. it. It's a marathon. And, yeah, you get it. Right. Cool. Right, Thank uh, you for your time.